where I'm going, don't know what I'm doing. I'm afraid I'm gonna get ticks. There's probably bees out here, but I'm doing it. Coming outside to film a video. Oh my gosh, there are so many mosquitoes, okay. Ah, I'm probably gonna get ticks either way, so I gotta check myself either way. Also, I have bare feet in my sandals, so that's cool. It's probably not the best idea. Oh, it's so pretty out here. Where should I film? The good thing is we don't have any like poisonous snakes or anything in this grass, so. So who is Dars? <laughs> Hola, mi nombre is Darlene. I'm also known as Dars. Where did the name Dars come from? It's been one of my nicknames for as long as I can remember, honestly. I don't really know where it came from. Some people might spell it with an S, but I spell it with a Z, so I think it's cooler. <laughs> it's a little more fun. This is the woods near the house that I grew up, so we've been out here tons. Like, as a kid, we always would come out and run around in the woods and down the trails. Maybe I should go down the trail instead. My heart is beating ridiculously fast right now. Ew, ew, ew. I hate long grass, ew. Why do I hate it, ew, I don't know. I'm scared. That grass is ridiculously long because we used to have horses out here. Oh. And the manure since has, ah, there's a fly. Made it like that, ew. Beautiful birch trees, I love these. <laughs> I've been on YouTube for over three years now, just trying to figure out what I like, what I feel passionate about, trying to find myself, my groove, who I am, you know? Because when I was little, I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I heard somebody else mention this recently that maybe they never knew what they wanted to be when they grew up because their thing didn't yet exist. Like, people who make a career out of uploading videos to YouTube, that was never a career option when they were little, you know? And I'm still working on all of these questions. I'm only in my mid-twenties. But I do know I want to inspire you to expand your comfort zone. And I want you to go about your life your just daily life feeling confident and positive and connected. I'm gonna share my new intro with you and I just wanna say, I did not realize that I've had the same intro for the three years that I've been on YouTube. <laughs> really a lot has happened in the last three years, so I mean, it was time to switch it up. I've been asking myself recently, why don't more of us just, ah, do what we desire to do? Things really do just tend to come together when we believe in something and really work towards it. I believe that we all need to spend some time pushing our comfort zone larger, especially when it comes to doing things that we really want to do. Whether that means aprender español, going for a new job, spending some time in a foreign country, maybe Nicaragua. Or maybe it's just going for a walk on your lunch break instead of sitting under those fluorescent lights at work staring at your phone. So fun fact for you, I lived in the same house my entire life for, well, for 18 years, you know, since I was born to when I first moved out of my parents' house. And when I moved out, it was two blocks down the road. <laughs> this house went out for sale and my parents really encouraged me to buy it. I was like freaking out. I'm like, I'm only 18, are you crazy? How would I ever buy a house? But I did it. I bought that house and I moved into it. Why do we let things like I'm 18, how could I ever buy a house? Those weird beliefs that society puts on us, why do we let those things hold us back? We need to break out of those things and do th do new things. Wow, my arm is so sore. So gorgeous. Goodness, can you see all the mosquitoes? This looks like a deer trail. Holy mosquitoes, I'm out of here, seriously. I am going out where there's not mosquitoes. <laughs> Okay, okay. I went to the open where people can see me again. Hi neighbors. I see a big tree. I'm thinking maybe I will sit on the tree. Look at this. I just love nature, love trees. They're incredible. How does something grow from a little seed to this? It's huge. Oh my gosh. Tree. 
crazy, it's windy out here. So I grew up in this very small town, non-diverse. The only other language I ever heard was Spanish and that was in Spanish class. When I was going into ninth grade and two years of foreign language were a requirement in order to graduate from high school, Spanish was the only choice. <laughs> Luckily I had already taken a bunch of years of Spanish so I was already hooked and I wanted to take Spanish. If you wanted to learn about my whole Spanish journey you can watch the video here. But the population in my town was less than 800 <laughs> and within the two like counties that were kind of my stomping grounds growing up there are several like a bunch of little small towns and within those two counties it's still less than 40,000 the population. Mosquito. The closest Target is like two hours away and the closest decent shopping if you want to like go shopping is four hours away. Since it was quite windy the other day when I was filming, I gotta fill in a few parts here and there where the wind was just too much to hear what I was saying. Isn't this cute? My sister painted this when she was like, I don't know, 14 maybe? Somewhere around there. So I grew up on reading books, playing in the woods, we built forts, we swam at the lake, I actually filmed one of my first okay there's the siren for 12 30. one of my very old videos one of my first videos on this channel were filmed in this area right here where i'm sitting you can check that out here if you want. i actually filmed a video when i was pregnant with valentina not in that exact tree but in that same area i did climb a tree when i was like a few months along so we spent the school year in town <laughs> it was less than a, we lived less than a mile from the school so we had to walk to school starting in sixth grade which is middle school for us i feel like the wind is going to be too loud i don't know if you can hear me pasamos el verano at what we call the camp which is a cabin near the lake and when we were at the camp we lived wild and free <laughs> We didn't really look at the clock ever. We just did what we wanted to do whenever we wanted to do it. Within reason, of course. It wasn't like we were doing really crazy stuff, but you know, just playing in the woods and just being kids. We would eat when we're hungry, go to bed when we're tired. We lived on what we called camp time, which was no sort of set schedule <laughs> whatsoever. Our camp was one room, technically. It was like two parts. There was one step between the two parts, but there was no doors between like the big kitchen area and the big living room area. In the living room, we had a big pull-out couch where my parents slept and then the baby slept in the camp with my parents. But then we had two outbuildings, which we called the bunkhouses. And one was the boys' bunkhouse and one was the girls' bunkhouse. There was no plumbing to the camp, so we had an outhouse out back for the bathroom. We had no drinking water there, so we had to haul drinking water from our house in town to the camp. And then we just washed up in the lake. We had a wood stove there. We usually would go there sometimes in the winter just to stay a night or two, so we'd use the wood stove. Obviously we didn't really need it in the summer. Anyway, ¿por qué importa todas estas cosas? They matter because they shaped me. They made me who I am today. I was used to doing the same things all the time. We were going to the same places, doing the same things, eating the same foods, I guess. Listening to the same, always English, barely ever Spanish, except in Spanish class, right? It was always the same for me. But then when I went into high school, my friends started making new friends, so I had to make new connections. Things really started changing. So that was kind of the start of me going out of my comfort zone, I guess. And then going to Nicaragua forced me way the heck out there. It got me so far out of my comfort zone with la cultura, el idioma, la clima. El clima? La clima? And all of that, I realize now, is what transformed my shyness because I guess I didn't mention at the beginning of this video, but I have talked about how I used to be super shy. That's what transformed my shyness into confidence really fast, like way faster than I ever could have being in my hometown where I'm comfortable with everything. <sighs> Going to the bathroom in Nicaragua was even an ordeal, okay? Because back home, you know, go into the bathroom, lock the door, use the toilet, toilet paper, wash your hands with soap right there in the bathroom, dry your hands, whatever, go out. In Nicaragua was a different story and this is no shame to anyone, of course. Um, things are just different there, okay? And, and each bathroom is slightly different, but you might go into the bathroom, there may or may not be a lock on the door, there may or may not be toilet paper in there, you might have to bring your own toilet paper, fill up a bucket of water to dump in the toilet for it to flush, and then go around to the sink, go out of the bathroom to the sink, again, dip water to wash your hands. If there's no soap, you have to think, battery last when it's blinking right at me. We'll see, we'll see. If there's no soap, you have to think in your mind, how in the heck do I say 
is there soap? No, I don't know how to say is there soap, so can I say where is the soap? Donde esta la sopa? <laughs> Which is what I said once. La sopa is not soap. La sopa is soup actually, and soap, like hand soap to wash, is jabón. Going through all this discomfort, putting myself in uncomfortable situations over and over and especially in my everyday life, every single thing that I did during the day was an uncomfortable situation for me. It was outside of my comfort zone. I was pushing my comfort zone bigger. I was learning to be okay with discomfort or I had to get comfortable with the situations I was in. So bringing it back to you, ¿Por qué no hacemos las cosas? that we really desire to do. I think we don't do them because it makes us uncomfortable. It's outside of our comfort zone. Think of some of your dreams. What do you dream of doing in the future? If that's, like I said, going to a foreign country or learning a new language, these are things we don't do, not exactly just because we're too lazy. I think saying, oh, I'm too lazy to do something is just an excuse. There's actually something behind that a lot of times, if you dig a little deeper. I believe that we've gotten too soft. We expect everything to be handed to us and to not have to work for it. We really need to push our comfort zones further and continuously stretch and learn and grow. Actually, it's probably gonna be funny when I try to get out of here. First, my phone. Hopefully it doesn't fall out of my pocket. Second, how in the heck do I get myself out of this position that I kind of... Okay, I can hold on to this. Oof, does. Check this out, this is where I need to go. It's actually kind of far drop to get down there. The hardest part is that I have my camera in one hand. Oh, it doesn't fall. Oh gosh. How fun would it be to, oh gosh. This, ow, okay. Oh gosh, please don't fall. Okay, I made it. Oh my gosh. Wow, that was cool. See how great it is to get out of our comfort zones. Oh, climb trees when we have it in years. Go out in the woods to film a video instead of sitting in our bedrooms. Ooh, it's great, it's great. Get your heart pumping, get some fresh air. Do it, do it, do it. Wow, it was a really dumb idea to wear bare feet and sandals. Okay, there's a snake. <laughs> we used to come out here and pick snakes too. This is perfect. Okay, let me see if I can get, ah. There's a spider. Ah, okay. I'm horrible at this. I used to do this all the time as a kid and now I'm like freaking out. Okay, ah, I'm so glad I didn't step on it. But it's still not gonna do anything to me. It's just a garter snake. Ew, there's a slug. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have I turned into a city girl? Do you see that? Oh my gosh. It's just hanging out. Did I say yet that it's a really bad idea to come out here in bare feet? Still a bad idea. I should have worn boots in this. Ew, it smells like a dead animal. Ah! My camera's gonna fall though. Oh gosh, are you kidding me? I've seriously been filming with my... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Those were not gonna be in the shot. I was trying to be cute and aesthetic out here, okay. <laughs> if that's going to a foreign country or you guys, this is me. This is my life. This is bro. <laughs> well, I think that was everything. I have some beef right here. Okay, thank you, sister.